Hello, welcome to the Working with Attachments and Apps presentation. Today we will be looking at building apps to view attachments in a feature layer. Hi, my name is Sarah McDonald and I am a holistic testing product engineer working with ArcGIS Online and focusing on configurable apps. Hi, my name is Ryan Leibid and I'm a software development engineer here at Esri on the ArcGIS Online team also focusing on configurable apps. In today's presentation, we are going to cover utilizing attachments to showcase a location. We will cover using the Attachment Viewer Configurable app to highlight attachments in the feature layer. Then, we will move to using Map Viewer to configure pop-ups to display attachments. In a demo, we will look at how those pop-ups can be utilized in another configurable app to provide more context about a location. Moving on, we will take a look at using the ArcGIS REST API and JavaScript API to query for attachments in a feature service. Today, we are going to be working with feature layers that store attachments. Feature layers can store many different types of attachments, including, but not limited to, images like JPEGs and PNGs, PDFs, and videos like MP4s. These types of attachments can help to provide more context about a location or feature on the map. Many data collection workflows utilize including attachments, for example, using a field app like Survey123 or Quick Capture, data collectors can easily snap an image from their phone or tablet to include with a feature. That moves us to what we are going to be taking a look at today, finding ways to present those attachments in a web app. Presenting attachments in a web app can assist with strengthening the app's purpose. For example, if an app is showing information on fire hydrant inspections and contains an image, that can help field workers who collected the data provide not only attribute information, but also what the hydrant might look like at that time to the city official in an office. The first thing we are going to be taking a look at will be using the Attachment Viewer Configurable application. After that, we will look at configuring pop-ups in the Map Viewer to showcase attachments that are associated with a feature layer. Let's start with the Attachment Viewer Configurable app. This app is a great template that we can use to showcase and draw a user's attention to photos, videos, or PDFs associated with a location. The Attachment Viewer template is a great way to review photos that may have been collected by an emergency response team inspecting damage done by a storm or inventorying checkpoints along a greenway or a trail. The uses for this app can be broad or they can be very narrow depending on what the app author needs. In this template, there are two layouts, a map focus layout and an attachment focus layout. Attachment focus layouts stage the attachments in the main panel of the application. A map focused layout stages attachments in a gallery off to the side of the map while the map is presented in the main stage. In the attachment viewer template, we also have the ability to include tools that can explore the locations in the map as well as the attachments associated with those features. Some of these settings include, but are not limited to, using a layer switcher that allows app readers to view attachments in multiple layers in a map, only displaying features that have attachments. This can be very useful to keep the focus of an app solely on locations that feature attachments, including a selection tool that allows for creating a set of locations to focus on, and finally, tools to examine attachments. A pan and zoom tool to zoom into details of an image or a PDF, showing the direction that an image was captured, displaying the associated address of a location in the attribute panel for that feature. Let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples of attachment viewer templates.
The first app we are looking at is using the attachment focus layout. As we can see, the attachment is taking the main stage, while the map and attribute panel are off to the side of the main stage. Some of the settings that this app have configured include the pan and zoom tool. I'm going to use the pan and zoom tool to zoom into the NASA logo on the building at the Kennedy Space Center. There, now we can see that setting a little bit more clear. Another setting we have enabled is the display address setting. Over in the attribute panel, we can see that the address for this location is listed first above the rest of the associated attribute information for this feature. The next example we are looking at is using the map focus layout. Here we see that the map has the main stage and we have a gallery of attachments associated with those locations to the side. In this gallery, we see that the NASA locations are being displayed. I want to explore the attachments in the other layer in this app. I'm going to use the layer switcher to make that change. We see that the gallery has switched to showing the attachments from the NASA splashdown locations. Now, let's say I want to narrow this down and I only want to look at the splashdowns that occurred in the Atlantic Ocean. I am going to use the feature selection tool included in this application to draw a box around the features in the Atlantic Ocean. The gallery has adjusted to show only the selected features. Let's take a closer look at one of the splashdowns. I want to even get a closer look at this. That's better. Now I can see the attachments associated with this location. In the new Map Viewer Beta, there is the option to configure pop ups so that they would showcase attachments present in a feature layer. In this configuration, there is the option to display attachments as a thumbnail that would open in a separate browser tab when clicked upon, or use the gallery option to create an embedded feel for the attachment in a pop-up. One of the more recent nice to have features in the pop-up configuration is the ability to reorder the contents in a pop-up. For example, shifting the attachments above a table of attributes or customly configured text. Now, let's take a closer look at the pop-up configuration in Map Viewer Beta. In this web map, we have layers that represent local farms in Eugene, Oregon and the surrounding areas. I already know that the farms layers include attachments. I want to make sure that these layers pop-ups have the attachments displaying. Let's take a look at the produce layer and configure its pop-ups to show attachments. First, I will select the produce layer in the layers section. Then I will move to the right side of the screen and choose the configure pop-up button. When I do that, I get a preview of what the pop-ups currently look like. Let's go ahead and add attachments to appear. I'm going to click on the add content and choose attachments. Once I do that, I will see the attachment section added to the pop-up. I can see that it's not using the gallery view like I would like. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the setting in the attachment section so that it's showing the gallery view.
Now, I want the attachments to be displayed above the attributes. So I'm going to drag the attachments component above the fields component. There, now that's looking right. Now I want to use this map in my zone lookup application so that residents can identify local farms in their counties. Let's take a look at these pop-ups in that zone lookup application. I've gone ahead and added my local farms map to a zone lookup application. Let's do a search and see how those pop-ups are looking. For this example, let's search for farms around Eugene, Oregon. I'm gonna go up to this search and type in Eugene. Now I can see that I have a few results returned. I want to focus on any dairy farms in Eugene. So I'm going to collapse the produce section and choose to focus on this dairy section here. From here, we can see that the pop-ups that we configured are still utilizing the attachment components that we had set up in the web map. So we have now seen how the attachment viewer can use two different layouts to present attachments in a feature layer. And we've also taken a look at using the map viewer to configure pop-ups that showcase attachments in a feature layer. I am now going to pass the mic over to Ryan so that he can cover using the ArcGIS REST API and JavaScript API to work with attachments in a feature service. Thanks, Sarah. As Sarah mentioned, I'll be covering how to use the ArcGIS REST API and the 4x ArcGIS API for JavaScript to get attachment data and use in your web application. I'll also be walking through the code implementation of a sample web app that puts these concepts into practice. The ArcGIS REST API provides geospatial mapping and administrative services. And the service that we'll be specifically looking at is getting attachment data from a feature service. Each attachment resource is a single attachment tied to each feature. This means that there can be multiple attachments per feature in a feature service. The attachment resource is only available if the layer has attachments. And one key thing to note is that the has attachment property on the feature service must be true. If we look at the graphics at the bottom of the slide, these are example responses of attachment resources from the REST API. You'll notice that there are various properties such as an ID, content type, and some examples include, but are not limited to, JPEGs, PNGs, PDFs, etc., and the size and the name of the attachment. If we look at the Forex JavaScript API in the Feature Larry class, there is a query attachments method that we can use to make a request to get attachments. One thing that I want to mention is when supports query attachments is true, the response will return attachments for multiple features at a time. If the value is false, then the response can only return attachments per one feature at a time. Supports query attachments will be true if the hosted feature service is at version 10.5 and greater. Otherwise, this property will be false. This code snippet shows how to check if the property is true or false in the feature layer. Now, let's take a closer look at the query attachments response. The data will be returned in JSON format with the feature object IDs as the property names and an array of attachment infos for the value. Each item in the array will contain data for a single attachment and has useful info such as the content type orientation info, name, URL, etc. If you take a look at the graphics down below on the left-hand side, you'll see that there is the JSON response with the object IDs being one, two, and three. And on the right-hand side, you'll have an array of attachment infos for each object ID. Now on the graphic on the right, you'll see that there's an example of attachment infos. You'll see that there will be information on the content type, orientation info, ID, name, as previously mentioned. There's also a link down below 
that will link to the documentation of the query attachments method. A useful property that exists in the attachment info class is the EXIF info property. EXIF info, also known as exchangeable image file format, is metadata for various types of media such as images and sounds. For example, you can find useful info in the EXIF info such as image orientation and GPS image direction. In order to get this information from the query attachments call, you must set return metadata in the query attachments config object to true. As an example, if you take a look at the graphic on the right, the EXIF info property will contain an array of objects with various types of EXIF info. An example we're going to take a look at today is GPS image direction. For more info, visit the link down below, which leads to documentation about the property. Now that we've gone over the key information, let's build a simple web map application that gets attachments and displays them in the UI. So before we jump into the code, I want to go ahead and demo the web map application that we'll be building today. At the top of the app, you'll see that there's a header. And on the left hand side, you'll see that there's a side panel. And on the right hand side, there will be a container for the map. Now, if I go ahead and click on one of these feature points, you'll notice that there are images populated in the left hand side panel. And if I click on one of these images, you'll notice that a model will pop up containing a preview of the image that was clicked on and a name of the attachment. And at the bottom, I've also added some buttons where you can easily browse through the different images. So just to demonstrate this again, I'll go ahead and close this out. Let me go ahead and close this pop-up. I'll click on this point now, and you'll see that the left-hand side panel is updated with the image attachments pertaining to this feature point. So if I click on this, you'll see that a model opens up, and now we can browse through the different images. Now let's jump into the code. So I went ahead and got the project set up. The project will consist of three files, an HTML file, a CSS file, and a JS file. In the HTML file, the markup will contain references to the 4x JavaScript API via CDN, references to a style sheet to make things look a little nicer, references to Esri's design system framework, and from that we'll be using the modal. And there's also a reference to a custom style sheet and a JS file which will contain the logic where we will be querying for the attachments. And just to walk through the markup in the body, you'll see that there's a tag for the modal, and right below that there's the app container which will have the header, and then there will also be a body. And within the body, there will be a side panel and a container for the map. So first, we'll be importing the map view, the web map, and the watch utils. Next, we're going to be setting a click handler registered variable. We're going to be setting that to false. This is to determine whether a click handler has been registered to the view. Next, I'll be instantiating my web map, and I'll be passing in my web map ID. Now we're going to create the map view. I'll be passing in a reference to the DOM element and the map. So now we need to watch the view for layers to register the click handler. So when the all layers property length is changed, I'll be using all layers to find a layer with a specific ID. And if there is that feature layer, and if a click handler is not registered, then I'll go ahead and call register click handler. In this function, we'll be adding a click event listener to the view. When the view is clicked, we'll first run a hit test to check if a feature has been clicked on. If so, we'll return the feature and on the return feature, we'll use that to get the object ID. Once we have the object ID of the clicked feature, 
We can now get the attachments by passing in the feature layer and the object ID into the get attachments function call. Afterwards, we're going to handle the attachment nodes. So we'll be generating the attachments and adding them to the side panel. And since we've registered a click event to the view, we're going to set this variable to true. So now I'll comment in get object ID and get attachments. So as I've mentioned earlier, this will get the object ID of the feature that was clicked on. Get attachments will now call, call query attachments on the feature layer. And on the response, we'll set that to the attachments global variable. Here's the handle attachment nodes function. So this will clear the attachments that currently exist on the side panel. And this will generate the attachment nodes with the new attachments that were queried for. So in generate attachment nodes, there's a for each loop here. And we're going to be iterating through the attachments that were stored in the attachments global variable. And through each iteration, we're going to be calling create attachment node. And what this function is doing is that it's creating an image element, adding a class for some CSS styling, setting the SRC property to the attachment URL, setting the attachment index to a data attribute. And this will be used to display the attachment that was clicked on in the modal. And this is adding a click event to actually open up the modal. So now if we look at the open modal function, we'll see that it's getting the data attachment index value. It'll use that index to update the image in the modal and we're setting active to true to open up the modal. Now let's go ahead and walk through the pagination functionality. So we'll be declaring some variables here, attachment index, attachments, previous button and next button. Attachment index's value will be used to display the attachment that was clicked on or navigated to with the previous and next buttons. Attachments is where the attachments will be stored, which is from the query attachments response. The previous button and next button are just going to be the nodes or the next and previous no button nodes that's within the modal. And once we have all those variables declared, we'll go ahead and add some click event listeners or event listeners to the previous and next buttons. So the callback function for the previous button, it will be calling previous attachment. And all that's doing is that it's subtracting one from the attachment index value. So that value can be used to display the previous attachment that's in the array. Next attachment will be doing the exact opposite. It will be simply adding one to the current attachment index and it will be updating the image in the modal to display the next image attachment. So both of these are calling update image. So what that's doing is that it's using the attachment index is going to the attachments array. And with that, it's getting the attachment. And with that attachment, we now have access to the name and the URL values. We're now specifying the SRC attribute and setting the SRC attribute value to the URL. And we're going to be setting the name to, to the inner text of this DOM element here. So this is just going to be updating the image with that URL, and it's going to be updating the, the name of the attachment and the modal just by using the name property. And finally, let's go ahead and add a modal close event listener. And all this is doing is that it's resetting the state of the modal when the modal is closed. I also wanted to demo an app which gets the GPS image direction from the XF info. If I click on this feature and click on this attachment, you'll notice that there's a value here for G GPS image direction below the image. Now let's quickly see how I did this in the code. So I've just added a new file and called it attachmentsgps.js. The logic is very similar to the example previously but I just made a few updates. So the first update, I updated the web map ID. I also updated the layer ID to look for in the web map. 
And now the significant change is in query attachments. I'm setting return metadata to true so we can get the XF info information. So now an update image, I have a new function called get image direction, and I'm setting that to image direction. Now get image direction is going through the XF info. I'm looking for the XF data related to GPS. And within that, I'm finding the value for GPS image direction. If that value is available, I'm now rounding the image direction value to two decimals, concatenating a string, and returning that string. If there's no value available, I'm simply returning GPS image direction unavailable. So in get image direction, I'll be taking this value and I'll be replacing the inner text right below the image here. So that concludes my demo on how to query for attachments using the Forex ArcGIS API for JavaScript. I also have a code pen sample that you all can access, so feel free to take a look and dive in. We definitely encourage you all to use this knowledge to build awesome web apps that leverage the use of attachments in hosted feature services. And also, don't forget to have fun with it. Thank you all for tuning in and enjoy the rest of the conference.